Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of My Tech Story. I am your lovely host, Alice Kanjajo, and today, as usual, we have an amazing guest joining us today. But before we get into that, guys, just a reminder for you to support this platform by um, subscribing from wherever you're listening to, whether that's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, or YouTube. We have visuals on YouTube, so you can go ahead and check that out if you're listening on the listening platforms. And just tell a friend to tell a friend and share with your community and guys let me know give me feedback on what you think about this podcast what you think about the guests that we have on here or any feedback from the information that we are getting from this platform because we are having such amazing powerhouses in their own industries on this platform which is amazing it's what i envision this podcast to be coming and it's amazing it's i keep using amazing <laughs> what's the synonym what's the synonym for amazing Inabamba. Beautiful in Abamba. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. E podcast in Abamba. In Enda tu vinyi nilikuwa nimeipanga. So I'm just very happy to have not only the guests be part of this podcast but to have you as the community tuning in and listening and um it's only up from here so to help skill just you know support the platform but without further ado let's get into the episode. Now, if you're not new here, you may notice that I always do a powerful intro of the guests that we have on this platform. But today we're doing a bit we're doing it a bit different at the request of my guests today. They felt they are the only ones who can really bring out the full potential of that intro for themselves. So I'm going to give the absolute pleasure to my guest today Ken who will re- who will introduce himself and give you more insight on who he is and why he is an added asset to this my tech story platform so ken welcome to my tech story and thank you for being here uh take it away thank you very much alice <laughs> feels good to be unique that's what she's trying to say in a summary mm. um, but do i say god damn it <laughs> Mm-hmm. Sips coffee. Sips coffee. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I'll also not fail to mention that Ken has also been a long-time friend and a family friend, uh, to say so myself. So it's very, it's gonna be very interesting. You know, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I talk to him, normally it's because of enjoy event purposes. Yeah. We're having a good time, mm-hmm. but I've, re- I've never really sat down to have a technical conversation with you. So I'm very excited to hear about this tech journey of yours. Um, eh, what I need to get, Sana. You can take it away from here. My name is Kennedy Calvins. I'm a software engineer. Four years of experience right now. Uh, I've had the privilege to work for a startup, a private equity firm, as well as a venture capitalist uh, firm. Um, yeah, my education background is also in tech. Studied computer science from Strathmore University. Graduated same day as her. <laughs> <laughs> my tech stack is um uh lamp which is laravel more of laravel for the front end they do more of react um and pretty much yeah that's what i like doing so far and i beauty part is i also do clones um Ooh, which is for me the most interesting clones. exactly thing and why i was very interested for you coming my on here my interest in that particularly starts with uh, the existence of the Fortune 500 fi- uh, companies, top f- companies, that is the likes of Microsoft, um, Google, Amazon, mm. Apple. We refer to them as Fang mm. in, the, in the tech. That is Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, that is now something pretty much to take and put <laughs> home. And oh, currently it's man because Facebook is now meta. And, um, yeah, I think... Uh, what else do I have to say? I mean, do you want to name drop where you are now or where you are heading towards by the time this episode is going to come out? It's a Fortune 500 company. I will not mention the name. Okay. So I'll let you hang in so that mm. you guys can actually contact me more. Yeah, we, we follow up. We follow right? up, guys. Yeah. I'll share with you. It's good to be a hot when kick. the episode comes out, <laughs> you know, the hot kick. But yes. It's good to be a hot kick. We have a big kick. boy yeah. in, on, in studio today. So I'm very excited to have you as a guest here. Thank you very much once again. Mm, the, so. Hey, so you know one thing about Ken, he was very ready to start this conversation. Yes. And so I'm very excited for you to share your story, man. Where did it begin? Where do you want to share with us your tech journey? Where did it all begin? Your interest? And it the all, whole shabang. It, 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 it all began just right after high school. Well, my interest was actually in aviation, but mm. I actually had to drop it because, you know, um, doing aviation in the country is pretty damn expensive. And so, yeah, could not... More expensive me. than abroad? 
Well, if you need quality, you'll have to go abroad. You'll mm. have to go to the likes of Ethiopia and, okay. and, and, and South you. Africa. And as a lawyer, you know, we love quality, right? Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much. Um, so I had to um, rethink and redo uh, my choice of path. And then, therefore, I ended up landing into tech. So when so you say you ended up landing into tech, what was that shift from aviation to tech? Mobile application development, the love of it. Mm. Particularly, um, right after high school, but they didn't. You see that break guys usually get once you finish high school and the time you want to transition to campus. Yes. So I didn't have that. I don't think I've, 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 I've rested. I think I only rested in, during COVID, but that's because the situ mm. situation forced it. So I joined Strathmore for a certificate in Android development. And um, jokingly, just because, uh, well, you laugh at me because, first of all, the reason I did computer science is not because I wanted to do it. Uh, the brochure that I was given for the course was just looking so nice. So I just decided to take the course this because of that. This is proof that marketing works. So be, prior to this, uh, did you have any interest in doing computer science or were you coding at this point before you decided? I know you said you want you chose the path of aviation and then ended up in computer science. But I think what I'm trying to bring out is what was that decision-making process? Was it the pamphlets that you saw and said, maybe this is something I could do? Or was it, did you, were you, were you playing games or were you on the internet and said, this the, software is looking like interesting. I've been hearing about this somewhere. The, the fact that writing code is just beautiful. The fact that you write some English that is not really, you know, looks like it has grammatical errors. Yeah. But the fact that it produces beautiful um, images or some beautiful kind of display, I think that really triggered me. Mm. And 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 um, likes to even the guys who we were with back at at at, at Strathmore during my certification course. I think even the challenges and the projects that we were working on. And I mean, I drew my inspiration so much from Mark Zuckerberg, mm. particularly you know him coding Facebook in his um, uh, cubicle back then mm. in Harvard with the vision of only connecting universities, but in real sense, yes. he did not know how, how big. massive and 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 and, and, and in scalable his, uh, his product, product was going to oh, Yeah, be. exactly. So I think my inspiration also came up Kutokauko and stuff. And of course, as we were kids, we grew up, I think, knowing like two kinds of guys, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. Yes, up sure. until then, nini nini. And so, I mean, it's always been beautiful. And, and well, even looking at the trend back then, well... AI was not really into the game uh, as such, but um, looking at how software engineering and the fact that software engineering had even brought in the culture of remote jobs, Kutoka Kitambo. It's really? not something that has actually just used to up a COVID, yeah? just like, I mean, most career paths are trying to, you know, shift and, and get to, to adapt to uh, working from home kind of uh, environments Model, and stuff. Yes. But uh, this is something that tech had seen Kutoka Kitambo. That's the reason you see like tech companies would hire Kutoka Bali. Like mm. they can hire like global tech. People have been working in Microsoft even before COVID. It's true. Some of yes. the guests that have come onto this platform have mentioned that part of their journeys was them having Actually, most of the engineers mm -hmm. that we've had here talk yeah. about the experiences being cloud, whether that was COVID times or that was even previously, um, where they had to look for jobs. And yes. so maybe they would look for what are these apps that people go to look Upwork, for? Upwork, the likes of Upwork. Upwork, yeah. the likes of. So, you have Turing um, and stuff like that. You're right. Like mm -hmm. in the in the engineering world, like this was this was not a, a new thing to yes. work remotely. Exactly. And so um, I think diversifying into these, and, and I think we've now seen even the entrance of the big boys into, into the country. Mm -hmm. And I think that would actually probably make us shift and look at, at, at what were the, what, what are the pros and cons in the, of this, particularly yes. on a wider scope of view, even for those who think that um, uh, the grass is green on the other side. Well, I feel like in as much as we love these big, boys, the tech companies, the likes of Microsoft, Google, and whatnot. Um, the labor in Africa is cheap. I'll have to admit that. Uh, we've seen the recent layoffs, and particularly what I know and what I understand from my research is uh, these layoffs were actually brought about by you know, changes in stock prices, if you look at uh, that. Yes, uh, because we are arguably in a recession. Yes, 
uh, slow adaptation to some of their products. Um, yes. And 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 I know COVID also played a part, and and also the mass hiring that used to happen exactly. actually affected them. I mean, Sayuki Fungua YouTube in order to add in the life of a software engineer. It's true. There was this whole burst of uh, exactly. to the tech industry, but it also came from the burst in funding. It was it was yes. like a ripple effect because at some point there was a lot of investing investment in tech products, exactly. tech companies. I don't know where this. Um, potentially came from. I think people started really seeing the potential that tech has, but also it coming with the ideology of, you know, one thing about human beings, it's what's mm -hmm. interesting is that pricing, you know, money is a human construct. Exactly. And so pricing also comes in the same thing. So it became that if you work in a tech company, you have to be paid a certain way. And it was a way of life that, you know, everyone was enjoying. Mm -hmm. And the, here comes all this funding that people now have for these tech companies. So they believe that they then can have the liberty to hire, mass mm -hmm. hire people, yes. to build, scale as fast exactly. as we can, build and, as much and, as and, we can. And that, and that, I think, brings me to the point of, of I think, I don't know if you can recall, there's a time Mark Zuckerberg actually came to Kenya. Mm. It was it was a bit low key, but he actually I wasn't came. Into the tech and and that and just time. as 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 you're talking about money and having yes. a, a ripple effect, um, look, look at our big boy, our local big boy, uh, Safaricom. Um, Safaricom was known to be a telecommunications company. Yes. For a very long time, I mean, their 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 the margins of profit would come back then from calls and 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 SMS. Yes. But if you look at them right now, it's more of I think data. It's more of internet services. It's more of Mpesa, yes. and also the growth of fintech in 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 Africa, particularly. Yes. That has really contributed to the rise of 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 uh, tech careers, and and that uh, I'm talking about unicorns, likes yes. of Jumia, the likes of of Mpesa itself. Yes, and and I think uh, Mpesa like sh it shook the world. Like I mean, Kenya was up there in Meweka stuff, and yes. and and I think just so you know that we also need to appreciate ourselves is I remember when Uber came and there was an issue to do with how payments were supposed to be done. They were only insisting on card, but I think Kenya won by telling them here it's Mpesa. Mpesa is what is ruling is the world, and so I think coming from that perspective and the fact that. We, uh, we were able to even appreciate our products. Yes. Then we match a local talent. And I think that's what we have been trying. I think, mm -hmm. well, relatively, because I think in the uh, first world countries, you know, the industry became so saturated within a short mm -hmm. amount of period, of, a short amount of time, and so they started coming into the African Market. tech space mm -hmm. because, you, as you mentioned, labor is cheaper mm -hmm. and the scalability is high because products are still in the adaptation stage. Yes. You know, there are a lot of that. People already have access to the internet, yes. have access to these, uh, you know, tech products mm -hmm. and the solutions. But for us, Africa, one that one thing that sometimes we lack, I'll put lack in quotes because money doesn't go where it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. but the lack of funding. Mm -hmm. So these big boys come here, but also bring a lot of experts exactly. to come and take the jobs relatively. But I will mm -hmm. say opportunities have been created. And I love the point that you talked about um, how we, we you know, um, Kenya decided that Mpesa is what works here and localizing the tech solutions that we have here and making them work for Africans and by Africans. And, you know, I love, of course, I have a passion for fintech more because mm -hmm. I'm biased because I work for a fintech company, mm -hmm. but also looking at the likes of Flutterwave, yes. um, you know, taking over not just B2C um, consumerism, but also on a B2B level using um, African rails and whatnot. Which also brings a plus to companies like Little Cup. I mean, I love what they're doing. They recently have this feature of an airport, airport transfers. Like, wow. um, for example, if you leave, uh, we are right here. If you leave this place and go into JKA, if you uh, once you load your app with cash, yes, when you land in Dar es Salaam, the driver in Dar es Salaam will not need to ask for money from you. Oh, so immediately you reach the yeah. next. It's airport. like a connected kind of oh, cycle wow. and stuff like that. And isn't and that that's amazing? Look at how we are actually expanding and and and, and getting to put our products out there, and and think Africans we need to appreciate ourselves. I'm I'm not saying that 
we start um, doing some kind of civil disobedience to the apps yeah. and stuff. From, but I'm just trying to say, can we also nurture our own solutions? Because um, yes. as they say, no one will ever come from outside to sort out your oh, issues. I really love you talking about that because that's exactly the philosophy mm -hmm. that I have for this podcast is that to bring, because we are building products, but the adaptation rate needs to grow at the same time for yes. it to work together because mm -hmm. you need consumers to use your product. Products. So why can't we also have communication channels to tell the people that, hey, we have this product built by Africans for African solutions and we are able to, you know, put them into light and have more consumers use them so that the ecosystem of the African tech system keeps evolving I think I think the why is uh, it's also uh, because of our slow um, adaptation to, to our own products. One is because exactly. we feel we develop low quality products that is the mindset of of, yeah. of people because um let me tell you as engineers uh one thing i've learned about in this uh career is um we when, when you're developing something particularly myself i'm, I'm currently like working on some e-commerce project uh you get really so attached to that project and um you may end up forgetting the end consumer oh. of that mm, particular system you're solution. doing it based on a Ken likes this and not um, Alice and the other Alices outside there who will need to use this I product. I love you saying that so much because we, I don't know, mm -hmm. I like referring to the guests that we have on this platform, <laughs> yeah. but we had a guest who came and said, it's a, or actually was the, the lead um, engineer for Chums, which I don't know if you understand. Yeah, if you yeah, know. yeah, yes, I do. Was also came as a guest in this podcast who mentioned that you need to, not be so attached to the product that you're initially building, which mm. I think we wanted to bring yes. up in this conversation. Yeah. Because the one you initially build is not always, nine times out of ten, it's not always the way you first envision it. It exactly. evolves to something that yes. becomes even more substantial. So mm -hmm. that attachment that you have, leave it because you may not, you may want to build this product today, but tomorrow you realize that maybe this is not yeah. the one that's for me. And then you move into another product. And then, so there's that balance of, I really love what I'm building, but not forgetting that end goal of, Hey, this is the end goal. Like yeah. to uh, bring solutions to, con to, to many consumers yes. as much as we can. And I wanted to also, as, as we conclude mm -hmm. this conversation and get more into your tech story, because mm -hmm. now we're really talking about what's happening yeah. in the tech industry. Right. I wanted to take you back to the conversation where you mentioned that, you know, we look so much into these big tech companies and like the, what did you call them? Fang. The Fang Facebook, companies Amazon, Netflix, and assume Google. that, you know, like, why are we looking to them? Like, why can't we also build similar solutions? Mm -hmm. And that's where I can, I think your connection can lie to. You are able to, able to clone some of these big company products to know that, hey, this is not something that's impossible. So I want us to get to Via now back into your story and how this connects to how you started your cloning mm -hmm. and how it connects to your journey. Good. So um, basically, I think I'd actually describe my tech story in a nutshell in a way that um i'm a self-taught coder wow I, I i know computer science played a part yes but let me tell you even my friends um i'm sure they'll be watching this podcast um they know how i hated coding actually coding wow coding units were my worst in that is so funny campus. because nobody has had that coding <laughs> units that I've met. Coding All the devs I normally meet, I've been coding since I was 14. I loved it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie to you. Coding units were like a Kiswahili lesson back then in high school. <laughs> if you know, me. you know. I'd, I'd, it was like a uh, moment. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Um, and so I'd always sigh like every time and stuff. And where I, every, I, like, I was so keen at looking at the uh, what, what do you call this? The, the class timetable back in Strath. Kiona coding na choka. Kwanza kama ni mchana, mungu ni But but back back then, um, joining Centum, um, I started doing their Sorry. projects. When did you join Centum, and how did you join Centum? Um, I joined Centum in 2021, February 14th. What we kipenda na kijana kuhu? I'm a secure bag. Kijana I'm a secure bag. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, pretty much. I joined Centum in 2021. Good bosses. I'd love to give them a shout Sorry, out. Sorry, could you give more context to the people who don't know what Centum is? Oh, Centum is an investment company, private equity firm. 
Um, it's based in two rivers. It's one of the largest investment firms in, in, in Kenya, and it's associated to, associated to the late uh, Dr. Chris Kirubi. Mm. Yes, so pretty much that's a nutshell of, okay. of Centum. So that's where I worked. Um, joined as an, at an intern level, and guess what? Do you think I joined to code? What did you join to do? Shika Masimu, support. No way, you were customer support. I was nearly quite support. Now that is the interesting part about your tech yes. story. Now you started as support in your first tech Support job. level. Okay. Chini mm hapo. -hmm. Um, um, the cancer growing. And then I think the thing that I was, um, it was more of an open office structure. So I'd sit next to a developer. His name is actually Emmanuel Jebez, a very senior um, engineer, and he's, he's a mentor, mm. per se. Like, I think I actually do appreciate my growth, especially for the stack that I mentioned, the likes of Laravel and Vue.js. Man, it's, uh, he's one of the guys who's really contributed. Mm. So back then, they were Kijana and Shika Masimu and every time. So, you know, um, it figured the point I was like, okay, right. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm working for a good employer and stuff like that. But hey, can't I just do more than you know, the usual eight to five and, 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 and only stop constraining myself to what is in the job description, mm. you know, what is in your contract. Mm. And, and, and I think I was like, okay, Ken, it's high time you opened your eyes right now and stuff. So um, my boss comes in and, and assigns a project to me. I think that was now like the second month into, um, into, into that job. And he assigns a project and the project involves coding. So I freak out. Because I'm like, whoa, boss, nigga. Like, I came here for Did support. Did you know that <laughs> I hated coding back then in, 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 campus. in campus? And Were here you not you still in campus at this time? No, I joined 2021. I'd, I'd, I'd finished. Oh, I'd, you had finished. Yes, okay. I was only remaining with, with one unit, which okay. decided to play around with me. Hey, your unit in Kula Max is a balance yeah, yeah, time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, which is life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Max is because na bishana na ID. Yeah. Anyway, oh, back at it. Mm. and stuff. So I'm like, whoa. And then he tells me like the crazy kind of integrations he wants that system to do at you. Oh, make sure it sends emails and stuff. I was like, just looking at him like. Man, if you're done talking, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just figure out the way. Guess what? Um, me being me, well, some kind of, I think, positive feeling and stuff. I just um, started coding it, doing it from scratch. Yes. Errors after errors every week. Let me tell you, it's not a smooth part. Watch I keep on YouTube a day in the life of a software engineer. Some software engineer wakes up, akuna mbuwa hapo, ametengeneza lasagna, subuya and stuff. Content. And party views. The reality of being a software yeah, engineer. The reality of being a software engineer. Ask software engineers. Nobody that mm -hmm. I've met who is a dev has a casual life. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you. Guys are like, yeah, it's high paying, but do you know what software engineers go? Because it's high paying I think for a I think I think uh at least we need to appreciate, we need to mention out the challenges also to make people, and mm -hmm. particularly for those who are yearning to grow into this space, to actually tell them that it's a plateau. It's not mm. a smooth curve. It's a plateau like any other career. And, mm. and, and the challenges keep you growing. I mean, the, more, the higher you grow, the more challenges you encounter mm. and stuff. It's a learning curve each and mm. every day. So yeah, back at the same time, I think I, I adopted to that, that it's a loving learning curve each and every day. I was mm. like, the air I get today, God, I'm not going to get it tomorrow. Mm. So, you know, let me, let me keep on and, 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 and revise myself, take a look at my stuff and things like that. And so, yeah, I finished that first application. Remember this time, Badatas Jans of Tengazati, those clones and st things, mm. where we are headed to. Still, now I'm, you're building, you're now starting I'm still, to build to, I'm, I'm, to things. I, I, I mean, in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing formal things, things that have been assigned by the company. Mm. But the side, I'm also looking at, okay, uh, could I even do a website and stuff? So apparently, um, so Centum has like, you know, Centum is a, uh, it, it, it's a mother company to so many subsidiaries. So one of the IT, uh, IT firm, uh, fully owned, um, so I was stationed there, it's called Tier Data Limited. 
So I looked at their website and I was like, rah, this is not worth it. Like, I know I'm not a coder. I don't like, I'm not so deep into, into, into coding, but I just don't like this website. So yeah. I tell my boss, um, hey, let me redefine my job description briefly. And hey, let me just redo this website. It was my first serious wow. project www.tiadata.co.ke if you look at wow. it hiyo ni kazi yangu <laughs> so yeah big ups to the like of Isaac Agachu and Steve Caraccio um who were my former bosses then for having given me this 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 challenge yes so yeah i do the website and let me tell you the beauty of software engineer when you do something and you deploy it at your website in dogo and it's live and it just does something it just you. does something for you man so I think um, pretty much came to adapt to that. So I started doing other websites. So I started from the basics, now doing websites, not serious mm. applications, just, just websites, you know, getting, getting um, clients, getting mm. near SIM to Alice, I'm to a website, Nini, and stuff. Uh, um, and I think at that point where you're starting out uh, Pole Pole, one thing that we need also, I think, uh, to note out is... Uh, for starters, please msieke kichwa, pesa kwa kichwa mm. as you're starting. Money should that be is a motivation to, at first. That is actually going to blind you. It's going to blind you, Sana. It's going to prevent you from, <laughs> from advancing. Nilikuwa na, I'll have to be honest, um, one of my weaknesses is nilikuwa na manjaya pesa sana. It's true. So, you know, I'm like, nani ataka website? 60,000. Nini, nini. You know, you're like, yes, you know, you can, but you're like, hey, you're also growing your portfolio at the it's same true. time. So, grow your portfolio. Things will, 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 will happen and eventually. stuff like that. I mean, um, if something is meant for you, it is it meant is for you. It is going to be for you. Yeah. I, so, yeah. yeah um, um, sorry, before you proceed too right. far into that, I just wanted to have a relatable moment here and mm -hmm. say that you studied computer science, but your love for coding started now be after uni. Yeah. And what's funny is, I feel the same way about my career. Like while I was doing, I did communications. While I was doing communications, it's like it came very naturally to mm. me, honestly. Like, if you know, like me, communications, it's it's just me. English was never an issue. Like I was just language, yeah. I have speeches, everything. So, but when I was doing the degree, I felt like it was such a pain in the but ass. But then you were bump in the student center. Hey, you know, I took my shit. I was so frustrated. Like uni used remember to be Remember when we had point. lunch together or something? Oh, yes, yeah. I remember when we had lunch. Wow. <laughs> uh, uni was such a point of frustration for me. But post uni, doing the job that I'm doing, um, I really literally ended up getting a job, Honeycoin, which is where I work right now. Yeah. With regards to exactly what my degree did, I did Whoa. in my degree. Yeah. And every other day, I find myself like, we learned this in uni. Or, you know, Strathmore, it's a pain in the ass, but they yeah. really sure. make you do mm -hmm. things. Like, yes. you do a lot of projects. A lot of things. So, a lot of the times, I find myself when my boss says, you need to do this or that, I already know how to, because mm -hmm. I've done 50 of these things while I was in uni. Yes. So, then I start having moments of realizations of appreciation for what I actually did in yeah. uni. But in that moment, I was like, now what is all this? Exactly. Like, well, how is this going to help me? Yeah. You know, at that time, people are convincing each other, you don't need a degree, this, which is yes. also true. You yeah. don't need one. But I will say that degree that I loathed so much contributed so highly yes. into who I am today. In they my say career. that sometimes you cannot see the hidden passion or the hidden gift that until you start exploring it, you know? Yeah. So I think, at, and, and that's where we need to bring, I think, ourselves into um, exploring things. So, of course, I do websites at this point at the center. Mm. And, and, yes. and I think I've forgotten some. Did I mention to you my first job? My first job was at the Microsoft Policy Innovation Center at Strathmore. Wow. At the Strathmore you did School. mention you used to work at Microsoft, I remember. Yes, Microsoft Policy Innovation Center. Unfortunately, the job was cut off because of um, COVID. Universities were shut with the government. Yes. So it was something way beyond control. And, and I think we were trying to see how uh, can really do things um, um, remotely, but it was like a no, like everything came to a standstill. So I was only there for like four months and stuff. But it was, I think it was a good stepping stone and stuff. Um, I also appreciate, I mean, the university for having given me that opportunity. So, yeah, back then, back, back again now at Centum okay. is... Yes, you've built websites. Mm -hmm. How, then what next? What was the next step? Yeah, now you need to build an application. Mm. So I was like, okay, um, I studied... Um, so I was working... Um, IT, uh, IT at Centum was divided into, I think, three. We have network and infrastructure. 
we have um, innovations department and we have service delivery. So service delivery is mainly concerned with items to do with support issues, you know, tickets and guys raising tickets and stuff. So I was there and I tried and looked at our service, IT service culture in the company. It was a bit vague. Um, if, 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 if audits were to be done, I'm sure we'd be scoring like easy if we were supposed to grade them. So I was like, okay, let me try and redefine this. Yes. Um, le let me try and bring something new. So um, I was like, okay, so I need some technical acumen into what technologies I'm going to use to actually build this. Because yes. I do actually have like the master plan, like an architect. I yes. know what I want to deliver at the end, yes. but how do I actually approach it? So right now we are now collecting tools. So uh, more of, uh, what do we call this term? Uh, the, the, the idea of, of, of getting, after the feasibility test. I'm okay. sorry, feasibility <laughs> study, not, not, not test. Feasibility yeah. study. So I do that and everything um, and, and I come on board. So I'm like, yes, I think it's doable. Uh, but yo, I took like eight months or seven months to finish that project. It was big and I think I was learning every day. It's yeah. something that right now, if I'm given, I'll crush it in a month. Yes, but I appreciate but at that time, where was, I said, yeah, and at that time. You needed, that time. Yeah. So you needed to go through that to learn the mistakes. Exactly, like a kid, walk, anguka, anza tena, mm. even mpaka ushike. So yeah, I'd start, and of course, I was being held by the likes of, of another engineer called old Evan Smburu. So I love how you're just crediting everybody yeah, in your yeah. story. I mean, what I'm trying to tell people is, is this journey, you don't walk in this journey alone. It's, it's barely any journey that you can walk alone, you know? Yes. Give, give credit, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Yes, you know? absolutely. Right? Um, yeah, so pretty okay. much um, I have at this point uh, started now building this up and stuff. I was failing, doing, yes. failing, doing everything. And wow, I really had very understanding bosses. Like, they were like, we know you can do they it. You can finish and it. They were and and stuff. And the day did. I hosted it. Oh, damn. The very day I hosted it, I remember the following week, I said, I'm going to do something challenging. And that's how I started doing the Netflix clone, which was my wow. first one. Wow, so now we are starting the cloning. Yes. And now, um, the way we are now doing the clones and stuff, um, yeah, so I'm like... Could you just get into, uh, sorry, just for more context again. You know, we are just assuming people are going to understand what you mean by cloning. But oh. Could you just get into what you mean All by right. cloning? A clone apps? is just a replica of... Oh, it's just a piece. I'd say it's like a subset. It's just a piece of like the real existing system. Mm. So like, um, say, for example, Facebook, which is a chat application, a chatting application per se, or WhatsApp and stuff. So you actually build an app of viewers that would work like Facebook, mm. but you want to build it with the context of putting in mind what kind of technologies does Facebook actually use? Mm. Do you think you can actually implement can that? Implement of course, them? at a smaller scale, because yeah. you can do it at, at, at a bigger yes. scale. But can you actually implement that? Can you learn? Can you... And, 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 and the beauty, this is doable because of things, we call them documentations, just I believe like any other career. So documentations, study document. Well, it's time intensive. You also need to study, you also need to sit down and study them and stuff. So um, for those who follow me on Instagram, they know how I usually write. The, I try to write it in the layman's language mm. as best as I can to just capture the attention of people, you know, because, well, these clones involve a lot of jargon, but, you know, you're trying to break it down for people and telling people how this is how it's, this done. Is how it's done. And I love that. Free education, yeah. first of all, on, yes. on his platform. Right? You're one of the only people that I know mm. who really are invested in sharing your tech journey, I'd say, yeah. and your process of cloning. So could you name, just name the profile that you've already successfully tried to clone? I tried the ChatGPT clone myself, mm -hmm. and I absolutely loved it. I was yes. like, this is good. I have a purpose. I have a purpose. You have a purpose. Huh? Yeah. So you, to, you must be seen. <laughs> When do we? <laughs> Keep you on the air. <laughs> we must be seen. <laughs> yes. So, um, Netflix, done Netflix, done, I started Twitter, Nika Kwama halfway, it, it was a bit challenging, but I'm going to go back into it because I mean, I'm studying. But I've done Netflix successfully, I've done Spotify, I've done Facebook Messenger, Wow. I've done ChatGPT, I've done, um, I've done a news app, a news, um, an, it's a live news app which ideally, we have something called an API. So it collects news from around the globe, different regions. So it 
if, 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 for example, CNN posts some news, then it's able to pick news from the CNN source and post it on the app. So it collects from citizen and stuff and, 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 and all the kinds of the major news 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 mm, uh, outlet. outlets that you know of so pretty much and so I'm, it's like i'm trying to combine these news into one mm. so yeah and particularly for the languages that maybe do that uh, i think that would be of interest for some people who want to know mm -hmm. um um so i use javascript a javascript framework called react js and next js mm. yeah so pretty much which is good for just to take it's called server side rendering but i'm not going to go into details for that yes but that's what i love um, and then uh, I think I've also done, um, what are the other, I think I've done so many. You can just leave us the links, uh, if you don't mind. I, I think will. for our audience to also test out, yeah, check for sure. it out. You can for just sure. send it. So that in no, the episode notes. Story, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <but. laughs> <laughs> this is real life. This is real life. Yeah, so I, I would love for other people to also test it out and check it out for yourself. Yeah. So that will also motivate the other engineers that and, hey, and, and, and challenge like, yourself and, and try I mean, doing what, this Do yourself. I do them to tell people that I know how to do things? No. no. I do them, one, to encourage people that things, these things are actually possible. These From not possible. loving coding at all to actually, let me tell you, even writing a simple, the simplest language is one is called HTML. You know, yes. the our websites. I used to hate that thing. But from writing codes simple as that to doing all this, it's first of all to inspire people. Like, hey, people, we can do this together, especially in the tech community and stuff. Yes. Number two, it's also for self. It's an informal way of teaching myself and, and learning, you see? Because, you know, you have different personal learning curves and growth yeah. paths that you do want Absolutely. to Absolutely. That is mine. That is my preference. People have very uh, many kinds of preferences. And then, of course, number three is the... Thrill. You thrill know? of it. Yeah, I'm not okay. Okay. Yeah, actually yeah, did I actually Yeah, I did this. This yeah. is my work. I have so, something to show you. Exactly. And 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 you think that's that that's that's a plus for me. And and see, I also put it out there, of course, now for in the in the world that we are in by the way today, um be an introvert, but do not be an introvert with your career. Oh I love that. Do be not, an introvert, but do not be an introvert about your career. Yes, do not be an introvert about ah, it. I do love it. Do not be an introvert about your career. As I, as I mentioned earlier, growth has so many people and so many stakeholders around you. You know, you can be mm. the most silent person you want to be. You see, go Instagram, in sour, but when it comes to your career, you have wow. to sell yourself. You have to, wow. you have to communicate outside there. Nothing will come on a silver platter. Wow. Nothing will come on a silver that platter. That one, Ken, is one of the most powerful messages yeah. that I have had yeah. today or this year. Mm -hmm about not being an introvert about your career. Exactly. I think that's really powerful. People always hate on, oh, the LinkedIn people are always just bragging mm. about their accomplishments. Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. Why are you in this earth? <laughs> why? Mm. For you to make a mark, mm -hmm. for you to create a career path yes. that, you know, a career is not something you are yeah. deciding today and then it's the rest of your life. It is the rest of your life. So you really it. need to teach it like a baby. Mm -hmm grow it i mean nurture it yeah. nurture your skills every day you need i, I, I would mean, prefer like every day we talk about things called generational wealth uh it doesn't don't just come we have exist. to build it we on our own selves it. so that the stakeholders around us can actually you know hold us because i mean um i'd, I'd, I'd love like at the point that i'm i'm doing i'm trying to crush an idea but at the end of the day i probably will have to seek for funding from alice Yes. And you mean I mean that's that's yeah. that's how things grow. That's and that's how, how companies grow. have grown. Community and being loud. Speaking, speaking of community loudly of your accomplishments. Yes. What do you mean speaking of community? Um we also have dev communities. Yes. Right? And um yeah, I mean the Safaricom dev community. Yeah. Which, which I joined Juzy, uh, not Juzy as such, but I think um it was the end of last year. The other one is Andela, which is, I mean, commonly yeah. known by guys and stuff. And, and yeah, it's more or less of online. And you also learn through communities. But the, it's true. let me tell you, you, whatever you know, probably someone can do it better. And so when you come together, 
it becomes easy. Your path. And especially because we're trying to scale in the African tech community, mm. it's very essential for all of us to very grow well. together. Yes. And, you know, if this is happening, we, are, we all know that this is happening and we all know how to help each other to get to where we all essentially want to Essentially. Exactly. Ken, so what would you say, before we wrap up this episode, with the, the final questions that we're going to ask you, um, I just wanted to wrap up this conversation by asking you, so... Where are you today and how does it all tie in together? Well, I think, um, first of all, if you say where, in the context of growing, I think I'm still learning, first of all. Yeah. Um, I'm, as of the time of this interview, I'm freelancing, so transitioning to some very, very good place. Shere, uh, Shere, Yosiku. Um, date unknown. I'll just tell her. Just tell her. <laughs> yeah? just so, tell no, I'm just around in the country. See, 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 my job. See, 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 um, uh, yeah. so pretty you're, much, you're I think where I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Mm. Um, it's still a growing, I, I think I still consider myself a starter because mm. I mean, every day I get to see so many different things. Um, in as much as, you know, you cannot really saturate yourself with so much knowledge and things like that. So I think Nipole Pole. So I think I'm learning. I'm, I'm yeah, on the learning still phase. Steady growth. Yeah, I'm still on the learning growing. phase and Which stuff. Which is absolutely okay, Ken. Mm. I cannot wait to see how your journey keeps going. I mm -hmm. think just with the trajectory that this year is going, I think the sky is not even the limit. It's yes. beyond it. And I am so happy to just hear how far you've even come and how your story is very different from most stories that I hear from people who do dev work because just because normally it's like I loved coding from when I was a kid. I was playing mm -hmm. a game and this, mm -hmm. this, this. But for you, your story is from hate to love, basically. And and, uh, and, and and I mean, it's more or less, I'm just trying to make my career sort of have like a multiplier effect outside there, you know, mm. in that it... It, 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 it will inspire someone. At the same time, it will even uh, push those who want to shift their careers and things. I, I can promise, guys, tech is there to stay. We have four, I, I think the, we have four items that are currently being talked about in the world. And number one, the highest one that scored, according to some McKinsey research, was AI, electric vehicles, and, 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 and um, I think climate change. That's true. Yes. And uh, I think I've forgotten the fourth one, but I think those are the three main ones. And uh, quantum computing, I think, something of sort. But those are the four, one, four ones that I know. And just to tell what people why tech is ruling the world, um, let's just revisit our history briefly mm. and look at the world. We used to, some of the Forbes magazine, Kitambo, it used to be the oil tycoons and the yeah. real estate guys leading uh, the top 10 richest. That is true. If you look at the top 10 biggest companies right now, we're talking of the likes of Microsoft, Google, even the richest it's people true. in the world. So The richest promising. people in the world right now are tech people, mm -hmm. honestly. And you know what? If you're looking to get into tech, All right. now is the time. Now is the time. I'm uh, telling it's you. It's the same but... Yeah, you, this is me making my mark in, in the industry. Guys so. have like three jobs, <laughs> guys working from home and stuff. I it's mean, true. Six-figure salary, true. not putting those Subaru spoilers and whatnot. You know? yeah. <laughs> That's always the first sign. So the yeah. car, especially men, uh -huh. the, the Subaru is bought. Uh, and now you are those. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, though, for yeah. sharing that. I think I'm just going to start closing off the episode with our final four questions. Uh-huh. The first one I have for you is what is one word to describe the journey that um, your tech journey has been to get to where you are and why? Resilience, adaptability, and perseverance. You gave us three. Why? Um, I mean, every day is a challenge. You have to adapt to that challenge. You have to um, redefine your problem-solving skills each and every day that you wake up and things like that. Like, um, if you find a problem... Try and break it down to the smallest component that you can. Wow. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Because when you look at things on a bigger scale, they become so intimidating and exactly. you make it seem so not feasible. But when you actually break down the steps of what it will take to get to the bigger goal, it makes it easy. It makes it more in your mind at yes. least you can reimagine how you can actually get to where you want to be. So a hundred percent I agree. Yes, um, and what advice would you give to someone who is looking to get to where you are, or maybe that um would aspire to get to where you are today. Maybe someone who's in uni right now looking at, man, maybe I'm looking to get into this thing. I don't know where my career is. What what advice would you give? 
I think have peace with the level of skill set that you have. Have peace with the level of skill set that you have. Then from there, you can be able to learn. Do not compare yourself to people. Mm. Right? That's the reason I said have peace with the level of skill sets that you have. As a junior mm. developer, or just as a starter, and learn daily. Everyone mm. started from there. No one mm. started as an expert. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm actually writing that. Um, wow. That was mm. actually, I don't know, that was personal to me, personally. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I love that. Right. Um, my third question would be, do you have any regrets? Or what would you have done better or different in your journey? Probably started early. And oh, <laughs> just to relate that is I teach kids coding, by the way. Wow. Yeah, I teach kids coding. And, 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 and that's, the, that's now the thing. It's to help wow. people start early. And kids, I'm talking of, if I mention kids, these are not people in high school. I, I don't know how CBC describes them, but uh, people between the ranges of class five to eight. Wow. So yeah, start that's to watch. That's so and, 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 and ask yourself why the Indians and the Asians are good at what they do. It's because they start early. Yeah, those things I mean, get really Easy expressway on honors in a jengua and everything, the engineering projects that you see, these people it started early very... and, and to nurture them. So yeah. that's the thing. I love that. So it's I more of a social that. impact. I love that initiative. Yes. Honestly, after we finish this podcast, I am definitely going to ask you more and more about that because yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. The last question that I have for you to close off this episode this can give us a powerful parting shot. How do you want to end your, your episode? What, what do you want to say to wrap this up? Huh. That's a very... <laughs> it could be a quote. It could be a fine closing remarks. Right. To summarize everything. Um, I think just from what I've actually seen is one, first of all, I'd like to appreciate you for what you're doing. Oh, wow. It's, 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 beyond, it's, it's beyond, I mean, um, just a word of thank you and stuff. And, and it's, it's an encouragement to people. One, it's to the tech industry. And two, it's for the people who do podcasts and things like this. I mean, um, at least you've grown. I, wow, wow. I think it, it, it's crazy. Because um, these are the channels currently that are going to inspire people. We are going digital and there's a book called Crushing It. Yes. I don't know whether you've read it. Not. No, I have not. I'm going to refer you that to... send it to me. When is your birthday? Just the date? September 14th. September 14th? Yes. I think I'll, I'll, I'll have to mark that and, and get you that book. So that I am willing to receive it with open arms. So I think is, is, is um, uh, embrace knowledge. Embrace knowledge. Um, embrace... I said three things. Embrace knowledge. Embrace peace with yourself and the level of skill set and always learn every day. Every day is a learning dance. And always redefine your problem-solving skills. Wow. That is what I'll always Redefine your problem-solving yes. skills. I love that, Ken, so much. And thank you so much for the kind words. Mm -hmm. I only hope to have some level of impact um, with this platform uh, in the best way that I can to mm -hmm. put the word out there about the amazing things that people are doing and yeah. for people to feel inspired, you know, to grow in their own craft mm -hmm. or, you know, do just do it. Because I think the messaging that I get back to back whenever I have guests on this platform is that the end goal is for you to just get to start doing what you really want to start mm. doing especially career wise and yeah. really the message I'm going to take forward from this episode is for you not to be an introvert about your career yes. that one we are making it a t-shirt and I'm telling you if you <laughs> but then if, the, if, 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 if if there's an app I'd tell people you can avoid all apps that you want but LinkedIn is a really it's a powerful Good tool up to to, to, to be in. yeah so i think please and to also keep track stuff. of your achievements yes honestly oh just to encourage people but they have gotten side gigs just from posting uh, my works on instagram on yeah instagram guys wow. come to me and i'm like there's someone who has a project so and so and stuff like that and uh, do not be an introvert <laughs> about your career, your career. yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much ken for gracing this podcast it's a pleasure. it has been such a pleasure to have you here with me thank you guys i absolutely enjoyed this episode as much as i did recording it and i really hope you do too and if you did if you picked up one or two things here make sure you show some love by um you know give, leaving us a comment or giving us feedback on this episode or just following up on ken's um which i Ken's work, which we're going to put some links in the episode description for you to follow up on his journey as we go. Um, 
And yes, you can support also by subscribing from wherever you're listening to or follow. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, especially, please, please, please just subscribe. It's free or wherever you're listening from. Anyway, moving on swiftly. My name is Alice Kanjejo and I shall see you next week for the next episode. And yes, enjoy your time. I don't know how to close this. Just let's end the episode here. <laughs> but yes, thank, thank you. you. I'll see you guys next week.